You're listening to The Virtuous Mind, a podcast from Providence Christian College that discusses all facets of the human experience and the liberal arts from a biblical worldview. I'm your host, Dr. David E. Alexander. Who was your favorite teacher of all time? Most of us can recall an educator who played a vital role in shaping our minds and hearts during the formative academic years. Your favorite teacher unquestionably holds a treasured place in your memory, and you honor this individual with reverential appreciation for the time he or she invested in helping form you into the virtuous citizen you have become. But what about teachers? Do they have favorite students? Joining us on today's program is Professor Jan Van Spronsen, preceptor in education at Providence Christian College. Van Spronsen oversees the highly effective EDU concentration at Providence. She has nearly 40 years of education experience and has a passion for developing the next generation of teachers. At the conclusion of every class, one will often overhear Van Spronson announce to her students, you're all my favorites. Oral encouragement is very present in Van Spronson's method of instruction. But just how important are words of affirmation in a liberal arts education? What impact does verbal encouragement have on a student? And what is the biblical basis for this approach in the classroom? Jan, before you answer these questions, I have to say, of all the professors at Providence Christian College, you are one of my favorites. Ah, uh, David, you're one of my favorites too. <laughs> Actually, what has become my signature classroom statement to my students began as a classroom management strategy. Uh, I had a lot less understanding of the connections between how we teach and the image of God and man in those days. So my reasons for using it then and my reasons for using it now are really very, very different. Early in my teaching career, I was introduced to the classroom management strategies of a man named Harry Wong, who emphasized the importance of teachers establishing procedures in the classroom so that students knew how to operate in the room and what to expect. In his book, he also referenced a study that identified seven things a student wants to know on the first day of school. That piqued my interest. One of those things was, will my teacher treat me as a human being? In the study, the students had expressed the desire they had to be loved and respected in the classroom. In those days, as I considered how to establish a routine that would let students know when class was finished, to avoid all that early packing up because the clock said it was time to go or because the bell had rung, I stumbled onto the idea of a concluding statement that would express care for students and let them know that class was finished. Thus, you're all my favorites, have a nice day, was born. I consider teaching to be a redemptive work. It's one entrusted to the teacher by God for ministering his redemptive work in the lives of students. And as such, it's critical that the teacher acts in the classroom in ways that align redemptively with the image of God in man. The scriptures tell us that when man was created, God said, let us make man in our image. We hear in this statement both the fellowship within the Godhead and the joint effort of the activity of making man. As one of my favorite authors, a man named Donovan Graham, states in his book, Teaching Redemptively, God in his triune nature is relational. Consequently, we are also relational. He created us to be in relationship with him and with others. That reality cannot be ignored in the classroom, David. The relationship between teacher and student should be characterized by the same kind of love and fellowship there is within the Trinity. In developing this relationship with students, we reflect to them the nature and character of God. 
It is within this shared experience that the student can grow and flourish in the educational process. This is the core of our redemptive work as educators and is the foundation on which everything else can be built in the classroom. I view each and every student that passes through my classroom door to be a person created in the image of God who has been entrusted to me by their creator. This is a high and difficult calling, as you also well know. I'm endlessly amazed by the expression of the creativity of God that's seen in each and every student. I'm also very cognizant of the reality of how the fall has so deeply marred that image in us all. It's within that context that the work of redemptive teaching is done, that educational decisions are made, and that the relationship between student and teacher is born. Does ending class every day with, you're all my favorites, have a nice day, produce that relationship? Obviously not. But in the larger context of everything else that goes into creating a redemptive classroom experience, it footnotes every class with the reality of our creation and our need for relationship as those created in the image of God. You've been listening to The Virtuous Mind, a podcast from Providence Christian College. The mission of Providence Christian College as a reformed Christian institution is to equip students to be firmly grounded in biblical truth, thoroughly educated in the liberal arts, and fully engaged in their church, their community, and the world for the glory of God and for service to humanity. We'd love to have you visit our campus. Providence Christian College is now accepting applications for the upcoming semester. Contact an admissions counselor to learn more. Visit providencecc.edu.